Hello, today is uh, Tuesday the 10th of April 2012, and uh, let's uh, take a look at gold and silver, mainly gold, in today's video. Well, we've been taking our sweet little time, as I've stated before, to either A, hit the 30, or B, make this bear trap, or a failed breakdown. Unsure yet which is going to be the uh, play, and there's nothing from this chart that's going to tell you either way. Right now, the uh, 6.50 p.m. Eastern Time, so it's actually the 11th of April in Europe, and it's down about 15 cents, 31.66. Again, that's telling you nothing for what's coming into the horizons over the next so many days or weeks. But what we have seen is that this previous level of support is now resistance. Again, that doesn't really say too much. Yes, on a bearish level, that's what oftentimes that you're looking for, that if we break down from this level, then we'll most likely not find much support where we've last found it before, and then, of course, go to 30. But we don't know exactly how this is all going to play out. Maybe this is just going to go choppy and sideways for a, even a little bit longer. After all, this, this average of highs, lows, and closes has yet to flatten out and go sideways. It's still in a little bit of a downtrend, showing you that it hasn't corrected for as long as other uh, chart analysis has done so before. The support level was found at a significant FIB level, like, Normally they happen, and that's been resistance in here. More often you test significant levels, the more likely it is you take it out. So coming up towards here increases the chances you uh, break this level and then regain the bullish momentum that started at the end of 2011. And a uh, move to 30 just says that we're at a significant test or an area where we usually find a bounce. And if this level fails to hold and we stay and hold below it for more than a few days, then this entire rally becomes that of a failed move and price action to state that we're probably going to go back down to $26 per ounce. That's uh, still looking a little bit ahead of schedule and if it does that, there's, there's to me no way of telling either way. It's pretty much impossible for me. But uh, what I would, I would expect that it's probably got a better chance of going to 30 before it goes to, what's that down, but before it goes to like even 33 and a half, 33.58 type thing. That to me is more likely to be the case, but that to me, that's just what I think. And what I think means nothing for what's really going to happen. Okay, so that's silver. Let's uh, switch this up into gold now, and we'll take a look at the daily chart for gold, which had its 61.8% uh, Fibonacci support test last Wednesday. It has now bounced from this level. Again, when you fail to hold above this level from point A to point B, that means that move becomes a failure. This hasn't failed as of yet. Therefore, for the move from, say, point B to point C to be a failure, then it needs to hold and stay above the two-thirds retracement, which is somewhere around here. And if that's the case, then uh, the bull market would uh, can keep uh, moving towards the upside. I think what seems a little logical here is that maybe they'll both sell off in the next little while, and they'll both uh, test their 61.8% at the same time, which means it would be the second test for gold, the first test for silver. Again, that's just what I think. That means nothing compared to what's really going to happen but it just seems as if the timing of it would make a lot of sense. And when it makes a lot of sense, sometimes that's exactly what uh, is taking place. And uh, within the gold, you had this downturn on the bands that went sideways. That's, again, going towards the downside. Okay, so let's take a look at gold on a more longer term level. I got a five month chart, which means each one of these candles representing five months. This is a, da uh, a daily chart. There's a hundred of them. So there's about 250 uh, days in a year. So this chart will show you about 40% of a single year. Where each one of these candles will have five months worth of data. So we're going back to the early 70s on this one. Okay, that's not the one that I wanted to show you for now. I'll get to that one in a second. 
Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at this gold chart. This is the five month chart and uh, you know, more volatile back in the 1970s compared to now. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit, go to today's movements. Let's draw a trend line and uh, see what we can come up with trend line analysis. Okay, so these support levels that were tested, it hasn't been a while, well, since the 2008 bottom, 2009 level, where it's tested in here. It's well, well above it. So we'll draw resistance. What I want to, I want to get the exact same rate of ascent. So just by drawing over the line, and let's find the significant resistance area. Roughly in around here. Or I could just even go down to this point and... I could do some copying and pasting, which means I'm going to copy and paste just a few of these lines. And then I can paste it, just highlight it, say here, and then draw another line over top of it. Get the same rate of ascent, and I got the same distance from point A to point B. And we'll even do another one. And this gives you a nice... Uh, fairly accurate uh, set of trend lines. Okay, so we obviously came up to this past trend line in here. We had a test in here, test in here, test in here, and now it broke it. Now trying and still is trying to find support at this level. And again, if it comes up and tests these, this upper band again a few more times, then maybe it's going to break free higher. What does it mean when you have upside breaks within this type of uh, trend, it means the rate of ascent is going higher. I'm going to put this back into its normal view. Let's look at this upper band for a little bit here, which was tested here, tested here, and tested here. The more often you test a, a significant level, the more likely it is that you take it out. Therefore, if uh, we have a test of this upper band without much of a correction, which means holding above 1400 or so, going sideways for no less than the next year or two, and then making it up to this uh, band, probably should mean that the thing's ready to explode. And uh, now let's go back to some older Fibonacci, Fibonacci for this high, this low, because back then it would have been important. And uh, therefore, we take a look at... Uh, what we've seen here, when this thing is selling off in here, if you would have done Fibonacci calculations, you would have seen the high was 197.5 and the breakout low was 35. Therefore, the first Fibonacci support level was 101.98. That was like almost a 50% reduction in price. Almost. And on August the 25th of 76, the price at 103.50. And I'm using LBMA numbers up until like September of 92. So I only get two uh, levels per day. So maybe it was an exact hit or even a closer hit, even though it was still pretty much right there. Support was found. And then you came back up here, broke through the resistance, and the prices went higher. I've got Fibonacci upside. What you do is you connect a high, you connect a low. And when the markets go higher, you take the difference of the price, which is 197.5 minus 35. That gives you 162.5. You take that number, you multiply the percent, and you add the low to it. So the first upside level was roughly about 300, somewhere in around right in here. How much resistance did we find here? The answer was none, at least not on this time frame. It did find support there on a couple of occasions, but uh, other than that, that's all it was. But when you break through a resistance level that you're supposed to go to, if you don't find much resistance there, the book tells me that we're going to the next one fairly easily. Well, that's exactly what happened, 460, in or around that area, which was, this time it was resistance, so support just played in this band. Then it tried to go below the support level and finally broke above it here. So the failed move created the fast move. And I've said in many videos too, that when the market's in a correctionary phase, that oftentimes they'll do the opposite move of what's really going to happen. So if the first break is lower, it's going to go higher. If the first break is higher, it's going to go lower. That was the case in here. The next level was 723, which is somewhere up around here, which 
happened to be where you had the top in here, your top here, a bottom in here, and then after that we had 1150. Well, really not much resistance in here, which tells us we're going to the next one, which was 1835. And we've already settled in from that level already, going about 1920 or so. So these upside levels have uh, worked out fairly well. The next one breaking the 1835 is close to 3,000 per ounce of the U.S. fiat currency. Let's take a look at the next Fibonacci retracement level, which... Uh, which takes us from this high to this low. It took its sweet little time to make it to the uh, Fibonacci level of 251.30. And when it did, on August of 1999, which was almost two decades after the top, it found support at exactly 41, excuse me, 39 cents from where the Fibonacci level happened to be. That's just remarkable, in my opinion. And... When we take a look at that type of movement, it was slow, and it took its sweet time, but it happened. And that's why I say with silver, the daily chart, it's taking its sweet little time to go to 30. And I'd be saying it even here, it's taking its sweet little time. And it took a heck of a lot longer, of course, to uh, make it there. But it did. It bounced from this level. And then the next significant two levels, which was one previous resistance, it got by that fine. And consolidated within this top in here. So whenever you have a situation where you go to a previous top in any chart, or bottom for that matter, you have this move, and then you just, I don't know, you do something like this, and, and then if you start to see a pattern like this, where it's going sideways where it was resistance, then that can be a very bullish uh, pattern to look out for. Of course, the market continuously went towards the upside from uh, that point on. Okay, I'm going to end today's video, so thank you for uh, tuning in, and uh, have yourself a great week. Bye-bye.